you are making the world a better place by listening to the Joy of Living podcast. This is your guide to achieving a more purposeful, powerful, and positive life. Join Barry Shore in unlocking the best version of you and becoming happier, healthier, and wealthier. And now, here's your ambassador of joy, Barry Shore. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good-looking people. Remember, you're good-looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. We have good in abundance. Our cup is running over with goodness. An amazing being who's going to share with us the essence of real life, which is called kindness. And you, you have done the great work of tuning in consciously and conscientiously today to the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore. And you've tuned in for one reason and one reason only. And it's the best reason, because you care the most in the entire world about you. Y-O-U. E-W-E. And that's great, because when you become the best you, you make the world a better place. You build more bridges of harmony, create more joy, happiness, peace, and love in the world. And you are joined at this very moment by over 348,622 people around the world. By the time we bring on our amazing guest, Randy McNeely, will be over 360,000 people. And thank you so much for bringing your friends and sharing. And the audience keeps growing larger and larger. Everything you want to know about our amazing guest today, by the way, of course, is found at our website, barryshore.com. All you have to do is Lean in and let that inspirational, transformational energy flow around you, through you. And then, of course, we urge you to share this with five people, just five, so that by the time we're finished, over a million and a half people around the world will be hearing and understanding this great message. And again, the reason you tuned in is all about you. Why owe you? Because, you know, in this show, we talk about the three fundamentals of life. And when you work with these three fundamentals, the result is that you will be happier, healthier, and wealthier. Who doesn't want that? You know, the three fundamentals of our life, number one, life has purpose. And when you lead a purpose-driven life, number two happens. In this case, a good number two. You can go MAD. MAD is a great acronym that stands for make a difference. Lead a purpose-driven life, you make a difference. And the third fundamental is to unlock the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Everyday words are a simple example. Right now, if you're watching this or listening to it, it's carried over the internet. You ask anybody, what does the WWW stand for? Invariably, they'll tell you it has to do with the internet. And factually speaking, they're correct. But in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for what a wonderful world. And what a, is the word, right? What a wonderful world. Now, of course, a tip of the hat and a big thank you to Louis Armstrong, Satchmo, for enabling that song to go viral and touch not just tens of millions or hundreds of millions, but billions of people around the planet. Whenever you hear the opening bars of that song, what a wonderful world, what do you do right away? You can't help it, you smile. Now, smile is one of the most important words, acronyms you ever can internalize, utilize, and leverage in your life because smile stands for seeing miracles in life every day. Seeing miracles in life every day. Now, invariably, when I tell people that this, um, speaking to groups of people, usually 5,000 plus people, and before the pandemic, it was human beings talking to each other, no mask, and God willing, that will happen again soon. We'll forget all about this crazy panic. But imagine, I'm saying that, seeing miracles in life every day. People raise their hand, hey, very sure, very sure. I haven't been up for hours, but I haven't seen any miracles. And I asked them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you stand still? I can't. Can you walk? I can barely do that. Do you have water, drink, food, tea, a place to sleep, family, friends? Every single one of those is a miracle. What's a simple pro? Simple as proof. A million people didn't get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. By definition, if you're watching or listening to this, you didn't. And you have an obligation now to be alive, to live exuberantly. So I usually tell the story about Barry Shore and relate the smile. Now, this, imagine the following. Standing up in the morning, hale and hearty, able to leave tall buildings in a single bound, and that night be in the hospital totally, completely 
paralyzed and it's not from an automobile accident. It's not a spinal injury. A rare disease took over my body, which I never heard of the day before, and rendered me a quadriplegic. Nothing on my body moved. Nothing. 144 days in the hospital, two years in a hospital bed in my own home, couldn't turn over by myself, four years in wheelchair. I had braces on both my legs, my hips to my ankles, and that was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven-foot walking wand. I still can't walk up a stair by myself. I can't walk up a curb by myself. And I have help 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. And it's all because of this one word. Smile, seeing miracles in life every day. But I got to tell you quickly, <laughs> my eight-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago. She says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile, S-M-I-E-L? And I thought about it. Smile, smile, sounds the same. Why not? I asked her how come. She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. Out of the mouth of babes. But what was she doing? She was creating the kind of world that she wants to live in. Now, create is a wonderful acronym. It stands for causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Thank God you have a brain, 100 billion brain cells, and over 120 trillion synapses connecting all those brain cells. And they're there for more than deciding what kind of latte you want this morning. <clears throat> the ability to do neuro-linguistic programming to choose how you want to live in the world. That's the most important. Now, I got to tell you, warn you in advance, because Randy is a very religious man, that your humble host, Barry Shaw, does use a lot of four-letter words. I even use the four-letter F-U word, and I do it because it's fun and the shock value. Now, the four-letter words that we use, of course, because we live in the world of positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, are love, life, hope, grow, free, gift, pray, pray, swim, and the four-letter F your word is fun. Fun? Yes. F U capital N capital N. Now people raise their hands and say, hey, Barry Shaw, Barry Shaw. Fun's only spelled with three letters. Not in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. Fun is spelled F U capital N capital N. So after the show, when you see your family and friends, you have a twinkle in the eye, a smile on your face. Remember what that stands for. Point your finger and say, F you, everybody. I say, where'd you get that? I said, I listen to the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore. And he wants to teach the world to F you, capital N, capital N. So before we bring on our amazing guest, I'm going to urge everybody to use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day from now forward for the rest of your life. Use these two words, consciously and conscientiously, you make a difference in your life, life of your family, your friends, and the whole world. And these two most powerful words are, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks stands for to harmonize and network kindness. To harmonize and network kindness. The Dalai Lama is quoted as saying, and I read in his writings, be kind whenever possible. And he says, it's always possible. <laughs> so imagine you go to your coffee shop, no mask, pandemic's over, and you order a fancy latte, and you sit down, somebody brings it to you. You say, thank you. You walk into the coffee shop, you order a fancy latte, you sit down, a few minutes go by, nobody brings it. You go to the counter, you say, oh, I'm sorry, we forgot, we're so busy, we'll bring it to you. You sit down, a couple of minutes go by, somebody brings it, you still say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop and it's raining out. Somebody holds the door open for you, you say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, somebody slam and it's raining out, somebody slams the door on you. You say, thank you. You're stuck in traffic, you're late for an appointment, somebody cuts you off, you say, Thank you. You get up in the middle of the night and you stub your toe and it hurts. You say, thank you to harmonize and network kindness. Kind is an amazing word that stands for keep inspiring noble deeds. I cannot think of anyone that I would love to share with you who inspires noble deeds than the wonderful, amazing, fantastic Randy McNeely. Wonderful Randy, say hello to 356,827 people around the world. Well, hello, everybody. What a pleasure it is for me and a joy, Barry, to be able to have a chance to be on with you today. My goodness, I can't be on with you for 30 seconds without feeling like I've just been lighted up, man. It's, it's great. Well, that's because you are a light-emitting diode. You are an LED, sir. You led the way with kindness. And that's what we're really going to speak about today. Because if I start reading to you all the things that Randy's involved in, what he does as a speaker, an author, a producer of a TV show, and things, and songwriter, and, and a person who is 
deeply involved in making a difference. So he is a madman. Then it would take up the rest of the show. So we're just going to jump right in and start with a great topic because it is all about kindness, isn't it, Randy? So let's just talk about why you believe, not even believe, why you know, not just believe, why you know, K-N-O-W, that kindness is the key to building trust worthy relationships. Why? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that by throwing out another quick question. Somebody gave me a speaking topic of asking why kindness matters. And the fact that it is kindness matters because people matter. And when it comes to building the relationships that you just talked about, we're talking about building relationships with people. And when people know you care, that's when they want to talk with you. That's when they want to be around you. That's when they want to interact with you. If I come across as a jerk, <laughs> if I am not being kind, if I am exhibiting behaviors that are not conducive to engendering trust, then how many people are going to want to be with me or work with me or do anything with me? They're not. They're going to turn and around and walk away they're going to stay away they're and they're not going to recommend me to anybody else they're going to say don't go near that guy he's poison by the way i'm going to jump right on something that you said and i want to go to a higher level or a deeper level depending how you say it guess if you start acting like a jerk like you said those are your words people will be repelled but guess who really is going to be repelled the most yourself. Exactly. I know there's the greatest kindness that you can ever do is to be kind to yourself. When you become kind to yourself, then now you begin to channel that same kindness in other relationships. Is that not correct? Oh, that's absolutely true. You know, and if we're not able to look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, you know, I have value. I'm, you know, I'm unique. I have value. I can make a difference and be able to really feel that, not just be saying it, but actually feel that. We're going to have a hard time giving away any kindness to other people. Instead, we'll be projecting our own unkind feelings towards ourselves onto other people because it's, it's, it's just, it, you can't give away what you don't have. Okay, this is. The beauty and the genius why people, by thank God, by the hundreds of thousands, tune in to listen to the joy of living. It's not because of Barry Shore and even not because of you, Randy. It's because the person, you, the one listening, because you care the most in the whole world about yourself. What Randy just shared with us is really something of momentous proportions. You cannot give or share that which you don't have. So if you really want to make a difference in the world, then the ability to be kind to oneself, to understand that you are, as you said, unique and special and have the ability to contribute, that is the beginning of the process, isn't it? You want to make that well as deep as possible. So how do you use kindness to build greater and more beneficial relationships? Well... Whenever, you know, if, if we're going into a new situation or we're in a current situation, treating people with respect, listening generously. When you're on a, like if you're on a call like conversation like this, make sure your phone is turned off. Make sure that uh, you're, you remove distractions so that your ears are listening forward, if you will, and paying attention to what's being said in front of you. Uh, really and then sh show a genuine interest in people find out what makes them tick why they are the way they are you know be willing to um ask questions that that help you to get to know them and be willing to share as well you know allow people to get to know you their kindness there are so many different behaviors that all engender trust that are based in kindness, everything that we build our relationships on, honesty, setting clear expectations, showing respect, listening generously, being on time, keeping commitments, and good grief, a whole plethora of other things that you could talk about. They all open up the door. They're all behaviors 
that engender trust. And when people trust you, that's when they're willing to open their hearts. And kindness is the key to connection, which opens up the door to trust, if that makes sense. Not only does it make sense, it makes dollars, it makes thousands, it makes millions, it makes trillions. It's the currency of life. It yeah. is truly that kind. Now, I'd like to mention that because you know that I love acronyms. And the people, one of the reasons people tune into the show, they love acronyms. So we have a, a deep acronym for LISTEN, which stands for Locating Insightful, Sustainable, Transformative Energy Now. And I think you encapsulated it by saying, if you're going to be working with another being, whether it's a remote situation like this, or it's person to person, which even causes better, maskless, <laughs> and, and really human to human, or a group of people, it is incumbent upon people to make sure that that which does distract does not impose upon that which is geared to attracting. In other words, what we want to do is attract each other rather than distract from each other. Is that fair to say? Exactly. I think that's fair to say. Yes. And I, I, if you permit me, Barry, I'd like to go back to something I should have said in the beginning. When it comes to kindness and being able to build relationships of trust with people, first of all, we have to make sure we have both the right mindset and the right heart set, if you will. Mindset meaning seeing and thinking about people as people, not as objects, not as things to be used, not as means to an end, but other human beings that deserve to be cared for and valued. And our hard set meaning, meaning believing that people have value and that they're worth being loved and the, and the behaviors that we exhibit are conducive towards that. So we have to have the right mindset and the right heart set in order to truly be able to utilize kindness to its full potential and be able to reap the reap the the tremendous benefits that can come to everyone to ourselves and to everyone that we come in contact with. So let's um, unpack some of this and go deep into mindset and heart set. Can you give us two maximum three? concrete practical steps that I can use for myself to begin that process to make sure that the one or two or several people that I'm interacting with that are, I'm really working my mind and heart set. What can I do to prepare for that? Well, first of all, let's go back to what we were saying earlier about kindness to ourselves. The last person we want to objectify is ourselves. We don't want to think of ourselves as an object. So first of all, we have to remember that I have value. That's the first thing I have to think. I have value. I'm unique. You know, we go to the auctions. People spend millions of dollars on items at an auction because it's rare, because it's one of a kind or whatever. Well, think about this. You're one of a kind. Each one of us is one of a kind. Each of a, one of us is rare. And every one of us is priceless. We're priceless. And so the second thing is, is to remember that you and I were, are here for a purpose. And we have the ability, we have the unique ability to touch hearts and change lives if we're willing to put forth the effort, starting with our own. Because so the first part of the mindset is recognize that I am worthy yeah okay Me, great I value i am worthy and then remember that we can because we have we're unique and worthy and have value we can as you would say go mad we can go mad and make a difference we can look for opportunities to lift and build and serve and bless other people so once we have the mind, right mindset towards ourselves, then we can start looking outwardly and say, okay, how can I serve and lift and build and bless others? So this is fabulous. In other words, <clears throat> what you said is once we've established, once I have established that I am worthy, I am of value, and it's, and it's something that I believe takes work because the, oftentimes, no matter who the family is that you're raised with, 
uh, there is a process of unfolding in oneself that says, yeah, maybe I am, but maybe I'm not, and there's a doubt, until clarity comes into life. And once you have clarity and confidence, they go together. Now you're saying the key of living successfully, I'm putting words in your mouth, is to look outward, to seek opportunity to be of service. So you're, are you telling us that the heart part of this, the mind part is being understanding worthy, value. The, the heart's part is using the word serve or service as the key. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, because when, we, when the heart set comes in is we want, we love other people, we care about other people, we want to serve and to help. And the, the beautiful thing is, it's a reciprocal thing. We cannot love other people and serve other people without having love and service come back to us. It, it's just, it doesn't happen. Right. It's a law. It's like, it's like, it's like there's, there's a statement, you know, cast your bread upon the waters, it comes back to you again. Right. But you think about it like this, you cast your bread upon the waters with love and it comes back, not only comes back to you again, it comes back buttered and toasted and with jam and <laughs> <laughs> orange marmalade, please. Yes. please. yes. Or a little bit of honey. I can. <laughs> <laughs> but this is beautiful. So um, I, I'd like to share with you two things. Number one is the, the great acronym that we use for law when people hear the word law, that sometimes they shrivel, they think law oppressive and such. And we're using it in the opposite way of expansion because law stands for love and wisdom. Mm. In other words, the law that you're discussing, and it is a law as much as the law of gravity, uh, the law of reciprocity, the law of attraction, love and wisdom make it so that you cannot be of service without gaining something. Now, there is a way, of course, that you can say, oh, look, I'm doing this only because I want to gain. You'll still gain. But the gain you, you have would be less than if you just decided and acted to serve because of service. In other words, the multiplier effect is greater when the heart is open more. Is that correct to say? I would, I would say that that's true. I'd say that the, the th what, what ends up missing, if you're doing it just to do it, not because you really want to do it, you're doing it, let's say your mom or dad or, your, or you volunteered for something because your boss asked you to and you, you go and do it, it's a good thing to do, but your heart's not in it. Well, you might accomplish some good things. That's great. But when your heart is in it, people can feel it and that love reciprocates in greater ways. When your heart's not in it, when you're there just going through the motions, people can feel that too. And, and they don't feel like reciprocating. They don't, you know, it doesn't come back. That, that law that we just talked about <laughs> doesn't work right. And By the way, this applies, when we're talking about service, <clears throat> we're not talking that one has to become Mother Teresa. No. We're talking about <laughs> service in any aspect of your life. In other words, a doctor, Wow, of course that's service. Well, there are many types of doctors. There's a PhD, it's called a doctor. In other words, the ability to share that which you have, doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, a, a cook. A cook actually is one of the greatest forms of service. It doesn't matter whether you're a cook in a fast food restaurant or in a place that charges $1,000 for a meal. It's not the point. The point is, what are you bringing to your occupation, to your work, to that which you have chosen to do. And I think that's really what you're me mentioning here, Randy, is that the ability to do that with full openness of heart brings about a benefit that is literally immeasurable. It's like you said, cast your bread upon the water. It's the ripple effect of, let's say, the butterfly effect. So do you, do you want to tell people what the butterfly effect or should I mention it? Go ahead. Okay, so this is your show, but it's on menu. Because, see, I want to tell everybody in, in advance, Randy is a ringer. What does that mean? I love Randy. I asked him to be on the show. He's wonderful because he is, to me, the essence of the giver. That's really who is, his life is all about. And the show called The Joy of Living, this show can be summed up in one word, 
giving. So the butterfly effect is very important in the world of science because scientists have determined that butterflies who go on yearly migrations by the millions, the tens of millions, and they, let's say, from the northern continent to the southern continent, and they're, they're gear against the mountainsides. At the flapping of a butterfly's wings in the Andes can affect the airwaves and cause or help contribute to a tsunami in Japan. That's the butterfly effect. Now, if that happens by a butterfly, which doesn't is not a sentient being, how much more so for a human being consciously and conscientiously doing service? And that's what Randy's talking about. That multiplier effect literally creates a tsunami of goodness and kindness and giving in the world. And that's really the essence of what uh, Randy is all about and such like that, because he's an engineer. And I say the, he's engineering kindness in our lives. So let's move into the engineering phase of what we're talking about here, Randy. How do we engineer kindness for ourselves? How do you, an engineer, let's say, builds bridges? How does an engineer in kindness build bridges? Okay. Well, let me, let me, uh, throw a little formula out there for you. It's part of a book that I wrote called The Kindness Giver's Formula, and it's easy. Anybody who wants to can learn this formula and start engineering kindness on a regular basis in their lives today. <laughs> as soon as this, they're listening, take down these steps. The by, by the way, remember, everything you want to hear, you don't have to write it down, just listen, because it's all at barryshore.com. There's so much about Randy that you're going to find there. His his TV show we'll talk about later and, said, and the formula. Just go to barryshore.com. It's all there. Just listen deeply now. Please, Randy. The first step for the kindness giver's formula is every day determine I'm going to be a kindness giver. Get up, look in the mirror, say to yourself, I'm going to be a kindness giver today. And then you might say, well, that's just a, a silly little thing to do. Look in the mirror. Why am I going to do that? The fact of the matter, the reason it's important is because it puts it top of mind right at the beginning of the day. I am going to be a kindness giver today. And it starts you thinking that way as soon as you get up. Second step, take a few minutes and think about your day. Think about who you're going to be with, where you're going to be, what you're going to be doing, and plan out potential opportunities to be kind. They don't have to be big things. They can be simple things. Smile, hold the door, say thank you, etc. Third thing, every day look for and act on opportunities to be kind. Once you've planned out the potential opportunities, go forward with your day and keep your kindness antennas up, if you will, and look for opportunities to be kind. Again, they don't have to be big things. They can be simple things. They can be very sure texting you saying, hey, Randy, I think you're awesome. They can <laughs> they can be. Which I do. <laughs> you know, so he does. And he sends with, with, with rainbows and sunshine and all kinds of great stuff. But you can say thank you. Show appreciation to somebody for some little thing that they did for you or some big thing that they did for you, whatever it might be. You, we never know. We never know when some simple little act we do right now might be affecting somebody for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years down the road. So every day look for and act on opportunities to be kind. Step number four, invite and encourage other people to do the same thing every day, every day. And then there's a final step that I've added. It's not in my book. It's gonna be in my second edition. And, it, and that's every day at the end of the day, take time to reflect on your experiences that you've had with either giving or receiving contests a contest, kindness. <laughs> I don't know where contest came from. Giving and receiving kindness and then write them down. Record them. And here's why that's so important. Does anybody here listening ever have a bad day? <laughs> we all maybe we have, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world, literally all walks of life. I'm sure there may be one person in this group, even though they're listening to the joy of living, maybe, maybe had a, a tough hour, not a whole day, a tough hour. We all have challenging times or challenging days when we feel a bit down. Beautiful thing about writing down your experiences with happiness, with giving, giving kindness, etc. And I say experiences with happiness because you can't help but feel happy when you give kindness away or when people receive, you know, give you kindness. 
So you can go back and look at that journal or look at those entries. And if you're feeling a little bit down, just reread some of those experiences. And I can promise you that those feelings of joy and happiness that you had at the time will come back. And the feelings of discouragement or depression that you're feeling at the time will dissipate. They might not dissipate immediately, but they will. And By the so, way, this I, is a guarantee that Randy is giving us. When you follow the formula, he guarantees this will happen and benefit you or your money back. Now, there's more Randy coming back on the other side of this break. We have just a short break. Sponsors love us. They are kind enough to give us their attention. Give your attention to them. And there's more Randy McNeely, the kindness person, the officer, the champion of goodness coming right back after these brief messages don't go away hey everybody barry shaw here the ambassador of joy we've entered in to the fall season and fall means coming up to winter holidays all kinds of stuff not just stuff stress s-t-r-e-s-s you know, I've spoken about stress many times on the show. And with stress coming on with the holiday season, everybody wants to be happy and such, but everybody knows what's going on. I want to talk to you about something really important for your benefit. It's called Talk Space, T A L K S P A C E. Talkspace.com. This is an online therapy program, show, website, and it's available for you. It is so important for you to be involved. You all know my story. Standing up in the morning, hale and hearty in the evening, quadriplegic. Okay, nobody has to go through something that drastic to know that speaking to somebody, a professional licensed therapist, can be of benefit. I know. It's true. It helped me. It can help you. This is so easy to do. You are talking about secure, professional process. It's the number one online therapy platform in the country. It works around your schedule, your convenience. I urge you, please, match yourself with a licensed therapist. Go to Talkspace.com, T-A-L-K-S-P-A-C-E, Talkspace.com. Get $100 off your first month with the promo code Barry. B-A-R-R-Y, go to talkspace.com, put in the promo code Barry, B-A-R-R-Y, and you'll get $100 off your first month. Please do it. You'll thank me. Best wishes. Bye now. Imagine the kind of place you would want to shop for your favorite fur baby pet. Honest Pets.co. Well, you found it. Honestpets.co. Not .com, .co. This is your go-to spot for the best, the cleanest pet treats that exist anywhere on the planet. All of the brands go through a rigorous review to make sure they meet the high standards of cleanliness, health benefits, and naturalness. This site was started by a husband and wife team, and it's veteran-owned, and that care about pets, especially dogs and cats, and coming soon, bird treats. These are very nice young people who really care about making a difference because a portion of proceeds go to support veteran organizations with a focus on service dogs. This is the place where you want to go. You want to tell your friends this has the finest, yummiest, freshest, all-natural treats and stuff for your fur baby. So go there, honestpets.co honestpets.co. Do it now. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved immortal beings and good looking people. Maybe you're good looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. We have good in abundance. Our cup runneth over with good. Randy McNeely, he is the essence of kindness, the channeling of good in the world, a child of God. And he shares with us the kindness formula. He talks about building trust, trust standing for total reliance upon something true and sharing with other people. Share stands for spreading happiness and rejuvenating energy. That's what Randy does. By the way, Randy is also a songwriter and a instrumentalist and a husband and a father and a great guy and a friend <laughs> and a television producer. Let's talk about your TV reality show because I think it stands unique 
in the current situation of what's happening in our world. It's geared towards bringing forth that which we're talking about right now. So let's delve in for a number of good minutes on what the show is about, what you've produced so far, and what looks to be happening in the next season, Randy. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate you bringing that up. I am the executive producer for a kindness-driven reality TV show. Positive reality TV. Yes, that does exist. Positive reality. Wait a minute. That sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. It's an oxytrue. (laughs) It is true. And the, the premise behind the show is to share stories of individuals and organizations who are doing kind things in the world. It's called the kindness factor. And it's all about how kindness factors into their lives. These are individuals who have been through tremendous challenges and yet have not allowed those challenges to crush them. They've used them as stepping stones to create amazing organizations. And uh, we, the whole purpose for the show is to showcase them, showcase them, showcase their organizations, showcase what they're doing in the world with a goal to twofold goal. First, to remind people that there are, are a lot of people out there that are still doing wonderful, good, kind things in the world, despite what we see in social media and on the news all the time, all the negativity that they try to feed us. There's a lot of good things that are going on out there. And second is, you know, to inspire our audience, to share inspiring, emotionally engaging stories with them and help them to recognize that, you know, if these people that we're seeing on this show can do these things, I can do this too. You know, to inspire them to get up and take action and to be kind and to give love away. And kindness is love in action. So you want to show love to people, be kind. And the kindness factor is all about inspiring kindness and, and spreading kindness and sharing and giving a voice and a platform to these wonderful people. With the other goal, I guess, I guess there's three goals to, is to inspire our, is to inspire our audience. Yes, I can talk. If they're in an area where the people, the organizations are, they can volunteer or they can also donate generously, as generously as they can. This is so wonderful. And it, uh, again, the ability to produce, to search out, find, and produce a television series that's dedicated to that which every single being really aspires to, which is to become a channel of goodness, a child of God. Because if you ask somebody, would you like to be kind? Well, absolutely. Well, what stops you? Well, in reality, nothing. What Randy is saying is nothing will stop you if you use the formula. See, the formula works. Here's the great news about life. The formula works. You work the formula and it works. Just like Newton discovered the laws of gravity, it works everywhere all the time. Einstein became famous for a couple of letters, E equals MC squared, even though there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of equations behind it. But it's the formula that works. Randy has given us the kindness formula, and guess what? It works. And here's really where I'm going to make it so practical and grounded in the here and now. The kindness formula will bring about the following. You will be happier, healthier, and wealthier as a result of it. And who doesn't want that? If somebody asks you, would you like to be happier, healthier, and wealthier? Say, no, I'm not into that right now. Well, no, that's not what you would say. You say, yeah, how do I do that? Well, you I don't need to do that right now. Yeah, I don't want to do that. um, By the way, Elon Musk. Sicker and uh, just, uh, you know, downright out of it, you know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Elon Musk would like to make an appointment. Excuse me, tell him next week. I'm a little busy right now. No, the kindness formula works in the world when you and it works for you through you and with you it's the the literally it's a shift that happens now it's funny randy we've discussed this before that some i don't know why but people have this problem with the word shift they tend to drop the f and yes. instead of shift happen the other stuff they think about so really shift happens when you adopt the formula and you do it daily and by the way, it's all good. <laughs> you see, you're yeah. going to get a benefit from it. So let's go a little bit deeper on something else. Uh, like you talk, we've discussed many times before, touching hearts and changing lives. Really, that's what the 
television show is about, but that's what your life is about. That's what your life is through your family, through your friends, through all your organizations that you work with, touching hearts and changing lives. So let's give us two stories, real stories, either from the TV show or something else that you want to, about somebody that had a change of heart and now is touching lives. Well, I can give you the first story. It comes from my own life, and, and I've shared this multiple times. But it's 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 a powerful story, and it and it something that happened over nearly forty years ago, and it's still affecting me. And when, when I was a young man, you know, our family. I'll just put it this way: my father made some serious mistakes, and he was being prosecuted, and it was all over the newspapers. It was all over the the radio, the newspapers, the, TV, the news. I was a newspaper boy, and so I, I'd go to get my papers to get ready to deliver them, and there'd be a headline on the front page of the paper about my dad, and, you know. And so, needless to say, it was highly embarrassing. I and and my self esteem at the time was just non existent. I mean, I just I didn't I didn't I felt terrible about me. Somehow my classmates elected me to be a representative to our student council at the junior high school where I was going. And, and I don't remember how that happened, but I was asked by the student body president to type up a, an agenda for a meeting that we were going to have. So I typed it up and I went to the class early and spread out the agendas on each of the desks. And I was just sitting there waiting. We had another 10 minutes or something like that before the meeting was going to start and nobody was there but me. And then this beautiful friend of mine, lovely young lady named Rochelle Knight, came walking into the room. She was very popular. She was a cheerleader. She was vivacious, and she was nice to everybody. And she came in, and she picked up one of the agendas, one of the agendas, and she started looking at it, and she looked up at me and said, and not in an unkind way, but she said, did you know you misspelled the word miscellaneous? I said, I looked at it, and I was like, Oh, no. And, I, and inside, I was just dying, dying, totally embarrassed. And then I responded in, that, in a way that reflected exactly how I felt about myself at the time. It, I, I just responded exactly like this. I said, oh, I guess you think I'm pretty stupid, huh? And she did not miss a beat in her response. She said, oh, no, I don't. I think you're pretty neat. <laughs> and I've never forgotten those nine words, Barry. I've never forgotten them. At that time, I had no idea how much I needed to hear those words. <laughs> I turned and walked out of the room, and then I ran. I sprinted down the hall to the boys' bathroom and went and hid myself in a stall, locked the door, and I just cried. I needed to hear those words. And for me, not to wax religious, but for me, I felt in my heart and in my mind, you see, somebody else thinks you're neat and you really are. And I never forgot that feeling of love that came into my heart. I've never forgotten. I had a feeling of love wash over me right at that time. And I've never forgotten that. And that has blessed my life ever since then. I mean, if I had tough and challenging times where I've been down on myself since then, I'd be an absolute liar if I said I hadn't. But again, kind of like the gratitude journal, I can, when I've had, have those times, I can look back on that experience and many others. I have been so tremendously blessed with good, kind people in my life. But I, I can look back on that and, and think, okay, I'm okay. I am pretty neat. I can I can make it through this. That was a total blessing in my life. Now, one other quick story of touching somebody's heart and transforming a life. You know, I <clears throat> have made it a, a goal. It's when my wife and I got married, there were certain things that we said we were going to do. And we were, we one of the things we determined we would do is always try to serve our neighbors. And we've made it a, a just kind of a habit everywhere we've lived. And we've lived in a lot of places everywhere we've lived in the wintertime when there's been snow, we've gone out and started shoveling the snow for our neighbors, shoveling their sidewalks and shoveling their driveways and other things like that. 
And uh, <clears throat> it's just become a habit. We just moved, we moved into this uh, neighborhood where we are now. We've been here for about seven years. And when we first moved here, I make it a habit of everywhere I go, I go around and start introducing myself to my neighbors. I walked around our neighborhood, which has about 60 homes, and introduced to myself to every single family in the neighborhood. And uh, as I was doing that, many pe several people said, oh, you don't want to get to know uh, Mark because he's the neighborhood grouch and he's not very nice. And for some, Barry, you're, are you still there? Oh, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, your, your, your video has frozen, so. <laughs> oh, really? Oh my gosh, I, I see me. Can you see me move now? Uh-uh. Okay, well, keep going. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, you know, I had several people tell me, oh, you want to watch out for Mark. He's a real grouch. You don't want to, you don't want to get to know him. And, and uh, you just might want to stay away from him. Well, I took that as a personal challenge to get to know Mark. So I went and knocked on his door. And within 30 seconds, I could see why people said what they said. But. I just, you know, I listened and, and, and he told me a few things and we talked, we ended up talking for about five minutes and I said, well, I, you know, I'm glad to be here and it's nice to meet you. And, and uh, that was that. I determined though, I, as I walked away from there that I was going to, you know, somehow win his heart and become his friend. And so when the first snow came, I walked over and started shoveling his snow on his driveway. And it's like five o'clock in the morning. I, I like to get out there early, <laughs> know that I'm doing it, you know. And so I'm out there at five o'clock and I start shoveling. And the next thing I know, 30 seconds after I started, maybe a minute, couldn't have been more than a minute after I started, I hear this front door open and, and uh, hear this clomp, 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 clomp down the sidewalk. And he's like, he comes around the corner and sees me shoveling. And he's, what the blankety blank are you doing? I said, well, I'm shoveling your driveways. I don't need your help. I can do it myself. I said, oh, okay. You know, that I can understand that. And then I had an inspiration come into my mind. I said, okay, I get it. You want to do it yourself? I'm happy to let you do it yourself. But I wonder if you might be willing to help me out as a friend, as a neighbor. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm a big fat guy and I need to lose a bunch of weight. Would you let me shovel your driveway so I can get some extra exercise? <laughs> <laughs> this and is so good. <laughs> I could see him trying his hardest not to smile. <laughs> his, his mouth twitched. He tried hard to smile. He gets this like, oh, okay. And then he tromps back into the house and I finished shoveling the driveway few days later we had another snowstorm i go out and i start shoveling his driveway same pattern a couple minutes later here's the door he slams and he comes out what the what are you doing and he says well i'm shoveling your driveway i'm getting my fat guy exercise well that was for the other day and i said well i'm still fat i need <laughs> <laughs> he's like okay <laughs> Then he slam and he tromps back in, slams the door, and I keep working. And but then about three minutes later, he came back out and he was dressed for shoveling snow. And he started shoveling with me. <laughs> and then we started talking, you know, just small talk. I started getting to know him a little bit. And you know, it went on like that for a few more times. But he would be out there, but until one day I get out, I get up. And I think, uh, you know, I knew it snowed. I get up, I, I get ready, and I hear this scrape, scrape, scrape out front. No! <laughs> I come out, Mark is out shoveling my driveway <laughs> before I could get outside. <laughs> and then, you know, that's how we got to be friends. And the interesting thing is the next year, well, let me refrain, let me go back. You know, Mark was known for when people would come by, if they walked by his house and they had a dog or a cat or anything, he'd, he'd just come out the door. They didn't even, even if they didn't go in the yard, he'd come out, get that animal away from my yard. And, you know, he'd yell about that and stuff. Well, the next summer, Mark didn't yell at people anymore. 
was amazing. <laughs> the next winter, you know, I go out and start helping to shovel his snow. And, uh, you know, we're shoveling snow. And the next thing I know, he's opening the door and he, he's got a snowblower. And he says, you inspired me to fix this thing. It's been broken for 15 years. <laughs> and then he started, we started doing, you know, I didn't have a snowblower, but he would come and snow blow and I would shovel. And we started serving more of our neighbors. And that's it. You know, that just goes to show, you know, Mark is my friend now. And he's not known as the neighborhood grouch anymore. He's touching not hearts and changing lives. Uh, first of all, please tell me, touch my heart and change my life. Tell me that I'm not frozen anymore. Am I still frozen? You're, you're great. Okay. <laughs> you see, what happened is... It's a, little, you know, it's a little bit blurry. I apologize. I should have said something earlier. It's been that way for the, the entire time, but that's okay. Okay, well... It's, uh, you know, it's what it is. It, the it, good news is, it's, we don't hear you, Barry, and we can see and uh, see you for the most part. <laughs> yeah, the good news is that people can hear it and uh, and 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 experience what wonderful Randy has been talking about. And I think this is such a place to uh, to hold for the moment. I have three quick questions for you, wonderful Randy. You ready? Yeah. Number one, will you come back again? Oh, absolutely, anytime. Thank you, thank you. Number back two, tomorrow. back tomorrow. <laughs> number two, you only have eighty seconds to answer this. What is your most fervent desire? My most fervent desire is to be able to inspire people to be kind, <laughs> to give away kindness, to love people, and inspire everyone I can to do the same thing. Thank you. Remember, as Randy mentioned, it begins with you. Y-O-U-E-W-E. -E. You're the tip of the spear. And the third question is, may I give you a hug in front of 368,292 people around the world? Absolutely. But I got to tell you what hug stands for. Hug stands for heartfelt, unlimited giving. Heartfelt, unlimited giving. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> and Love this it. is the joy of living with your humble host Barry Shaw. You've tuned in purposely and conscientiously for one reason, one reason only, because you care the most in the whole world about you. And you know that when you use the three fundamentals of life that we discuss on this show, that you will be happier, healthier, and wealthier. We guarantee it. Randy and I guarantee your money back. And the three fundamentals are number one, life. Your life has purpose. You are special. You're unique. Number two, when you live a purpose-driven life, you can go mad. Mad stands for make a difference in the world. Shovel snow or just walk by and say hello to somebody. That's going mad. And number three, unlock the power and the sequence of everyday words and terms. WWW, what a wonderful world. Smile, seeing miracles in life every day. It was my eight-year-old niece says, see miracles in everyday life. Create the kind of world we want to live in, causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. You choose how to respond in any given situation. Look what Randy is done, and look what happened with Mar. They chose to live in kindness and use four-letter words. But the four-letter words are used in the positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant world are love, life, hope, grow, free, play, snow, swim, <laughs> and tell the world to F you. Capital N, capital N. You got to remember that. Add that F U, capital N, capital N. And use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day, consciously and conscientiously, for now and for the rest of your life. Two words are thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. So to harmonize and network kindness, everyone. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Therefore, be kind always. Keep inspiring noble deeds. And thank you so much, wonderful Randy. And our blessing to everybody is from Randy and Barry, go forth, live exuberantly, spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joy of Living podcast. Now that's another step towards your healthier, happier, and wealthier life. Never hesitate to do good in the world, no matter what the situation. 
Join us for another upbeat discussion next time at barryshore.com. And be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show to get more conversations like this. And remember to share it with your family and friends too. See you on the next episode.